Hope everyone's doing well. My name is EQ. If you haven't been to the channel before, welcome to Stonkaholics. So today we're going to be going over Mina, Mina Token, Mina Protocol. Special shout out to Bibs. Thank you for the recommendation. Make sure to join the Discord group if you guys want to throw another recommendation or just join our family. The link is going to be down below in the description. So Mina is currently ranked 223rd. We're sitting at $3 at a current market cap of 462.7 million which is pretty low. And honestly, anything under 500 million for me is low. I do mess around with some of the super low altcoins, like under 100 million, but for the most part, they're sh all shit coins. So unless I find a really solid project that's around 98 million, then I'm just kind of waiting around and seeing. So right now we have a circulating supply of 154 million. We've had a total supply of 824 million. So you can see they've burnt a significant amount of their supply and you have an infinite supply. So they can continue to burn and burn and make new coins and burn and make and burn and make. It's inflationary like the US dollar. Their pitch is being the world's lightest blockchain. So you can see current cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum store hundreds of gigabytes of data. And as time goes on, their blockchains will only increase in size. With Mina, however, no matter how much the usage grows, the blockchain always stays the same. And that's going to be about 22 kilobytes the size of a few tweets. This means participants can quickly sync and verify the network, and that speed is gonna be huge, especially for Web 3.0. You want the speed to be almost consistent with the speed we're currently dealing with in Web 2.0. No one wants to sit around and wait for a transaction. It needs to be instant. Bitcoin and Ethereum and those are cool, but you don't have instant transactions. So sitting there for 30 minutes waiting for a transaction to go through is pointless. And if you're trying to get real world use, that's what you need is the speed without being a detriment to the security. So the way it works is each time a mina node produces a new block it generates a snark proof verifying that the block was valid all nodes can then store the small proof as opposed to the entire chain and by not having to worry about block size the mina protocol enables a blockchain that is decentralized at scale so keep in mind these projects that are blowing up as well like amatic or harmony or any of these they're going to be a scalability solution of some sort now you can continue to dig into the documentation in the white paper a little more if you wanted Let's take a look at their website the world's lightest blockchain powered by participants building a privacy preserving gateway between the real world and crypto and the infrastructure for the secure democratic future we all deserve so you can see 22 kilobytes which is going to be a fixed size other blockchains running about 300 gigs if you play video games or anything like that you know 300 gigs is a fucking massive file and you'll be sitting there downloading that forever where a 22 kilo update or something like that is going to download in half a second so some of the advantages that mina is going to have easily accessible now and always mina is so light that anyone can connect peer to peer and quickly sync and verify the chain. It's built on a consistent size cryptographic proof. Makes sure, that's gonna make sure the blockchain will stay accessible even as it scales. It's truly decentralized with every user acting as a full node. <clears throat> so that means that any participant can take part in the proof of stake consensus and have access to strong censorship resistance and secure the blockchain. You have the DApps where people control their data. Users have no alternative to handling over their data to powerful players in exchange for participation in the modern world, but the snark power decentralized app snaps keep users in control by validating and sharing proofs about that data rather than the data itself. Snaps make scalability simple and large computations efficient and cost effective. Now you have a private gateway to the real world. Other blockchains don't interact with the internet, which limits their application scope and utility. But Minus Snaps can privately interact with any website and access verified real world data for use on chain. Developers can leverage the world's information in computing and decision making to change the way we live and work without ever compromising privacy. That's going to continue to be a huge issue moving forward is the privacy of our money. The more it starts to become regulated and people are trying to get people are starting to get scared that bitcoin might get banned and so on and so forth you're going to start seeing people move money into secure private areas where the government can't necessarily see or have access to that kind of stuff so you can protect yourself and your assets no matter what and finally it's powered by growing community so other blockchains are run by the ecosystem intermediaries but mina is powered by the participants like an iot with an uncapped number of block producers our inclusive community unites people around the world with a passion for his decentralized blockchain. And in fact, they have one of the largest and most active communities of any project launched in the last two years. So this would be their pitching point. Why do we create the world's lightest blockchain to rebalance the scales and give anyone with a smartphone the power to build, participate and exchange and thrive. 
And going down, you have Mina's mainnet, so you see they're on their own blockchain. Now this is a relatively new project, so this chart is new. You can see this came out January 1st of this year, and since that point it came a crashing down. It did shoot all the way up at one point to eighteen dollars, but came all the way down to find its first initial support around two dollars. So let's mark that critical area. And then you have a critical resistance, which is going to create the channel up here at five dollars. Now you can see price did hold in for a while, but as it started to go down, it was not able to break EMA resistance, which ended up breaking this support, turning it into an SR flip for resistance, which broke price down even further. Now we have a new floor of $2.14. You can see price finally broke over this major SR and it's looking to have support and then a push up to hopefully retest this major resistance at $5.45 and then from there it can look to continue to make its push upwards all the way to test the actual all-time highs. Now we've had some decent growth in the volume recently. You can see the RSI has stayed over 50 which kept which has kept it in bullish and then you want to make sure what you're watching with this is that it doesn't break this lower trend. Realistically I want to put it here. So this is going to be a major support trend for this moving forward. If I see price make a tap and hold support on this line it might be a decent little buying opportunity now you can see it's not perfect but based on this resistance we have here this was an sr flip area now if i make this sr flip you can see we have an ascending triangle this is staying in the pattern of the ascending triangle if we break this resistance and find support on top of this line this could be a really good buying opportunity to make this first impulse break just a little bit shy of a two times move just to test this top right here at 545 now if it just wanted to test all-time high you're talking about it testing around $18 so that's gonna be six times where we're at right now now price average is starting to make another test at this resistance on the zero if this can break up we could see a bullish trend going into the price average we are looking at the hourly but we are holding bullish for a recent time frame on the RSI and the Stowe RSI is looking to continue to push up, hopefully into the overbought area. All in all, we are bullish in this project. This chart does look good. Now the major breaking point that I want to see, if I was a long-term investor, I could get in here, but the main part that I want to see is when this actually breaks this 545 and holds support on top of the 545 and starts to move up from there. That's going to be the really big move because then it will have fulfilled this complete cup You've had a long turban cup filling. Mind you, this is an hour time frame. But if I bring this down a little bit, you have a potential cup and handle that can form. That's gonna help hold the support before we get a really nice impulse break, especially if the market starts to start moving up. Especially if the market begins to start moving up. So we're gonna watch this one closely. You can see we're up 5% right now, but keep in mind that we are still in consolidation. Let's just take a quick little gander at this. So yeah, we did break out of the smaller channel. You can see Bitcoin has been impulsing. Now I have a major resistance marked for Bitcoin at this 42,000. I think that this is going to be the topping point for this move. Now everyone's getting super excited, but what I'm not excited about is that when we were holding this pennant here, we broke down and broke out of the pennant into a bearish move. And we tested the bottom of this consolidation, which I've had marked since the beginning of the move. So this would be the long-term channel. We came down, tested the long-term channel. Everyone thought we were going to zero. We were able to come right back into the channel, finish strong, and make our way up to the top of the channel. Now everyone thinks that we're going back to the moon, but there hasn't been any sort of confirmation yet. So make sure that you get this confirmation that price does break over and start holding support and then continue to move up before you think that is a full bullish trend in terms of short-term trading there's a lot of good plays you can see one inch is up 25 percent right now i have a little bit in engine and dago so these two are at 10 and 5 percent we're getting some good plays but keep in mind that if bitcoin does hit this major resistance we can see all of these prices start to plummet and you're going to lose those gains if you did not secure them in the short term and that's going to wrap this video up catch you guys on the next one